This is the interoceanic corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, a mega project that Mexico is building to rival the Panama Canal and potentially put it out of business like Panama did in 1914. The Panama Canal, a major maritime transportation shortcut for ships navigating between the Atlantic and the Pacific, is suffering from a drought caused by climate change in the area. With the water levels rapidly reducing, the canal's glory days are coming to an end. So could the Mexican corridor be the final nail in its coffin? The idea of a direct route that connects the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean goes as far back as the 1800s. Before then, ships journeying through the oceans had to go all the way around South America, a long, hazardous journey that took more than a month at sea. This sparked the need for a faster and more cost-effective alternative that slashed travel times from months at sea to mere days. This brought about the construction of the Panama Canal, an artificial waterway that serves as a shortcut between a major maritime transportation route. The canal uses a system of locks that function as water lifts to raise the lower passing ships to the level of Gadden Lake, an artificial lake built 26 meters above sea level. The process involves passing through three levels of water lifts that go upwards before being raised to the 82-kilometer-long elevated surface and then passing through another three that go down. This process takes between 8 to 10 hours to complete, massively reducing the journey between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans by more than 8,000 miles and leaving ships with just a few days to travel. In 1881, Ferdinand de Lesseps, a French engineer, suggested digging through Panama in order to connect the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. This model was simply a replica of the Suez Canal he had successfully overseen. However, he soon found out that Panama was a terrain much more rugged and challenging than the Suez. This area was a tropical rainforest with numerous environmental hazards, such as frequent landslides caused by heavy rains and venomous snakes, spiders, and scorpions. The jungle swarmed with deadly mosquitoes and diseases that brought the workers down, with death rates going as high as 200 per month. In 1889, the French construction company declared bankruptcy after investing a staggering $287 million in the project. With very little progress made, the project was abandoned until 1904, when the United States revived the construction site, this time with a new lock system design. After studying the failure of the sea level canal design by Lesseps and confirming that it couldn't work for this South American terrain. After years of hard work and millions of dollars invested, the Panama Canal was finally completed, a remarkable feat of engineering achieved by a total of more than 75,000 workers. The canal was officially launched in 1914 and has since become a global shipping route, with over 40% of all U.S. container ships and 5% of the world's global trade passing through it. But in recent times, its spot as a major maritime route has been threatened by climate change. In October 2023, the region experienced 41% less rainfall than usual, causing the water levels of Gatton Lake to reduce by almost 6 feet. And since Gatton Lake feeds the canal, the fewer rainfalls have resulted in low water levels that aren't sufficient to efficiently run the canal. This has caused a massive reduction in the number of ships that can go through the canal from the usual 36 to just about 18 as of February 2024. And it doesn't look like it's ending anytime soon, with the authorities adopting even more drastic measures to minimize water consumption and manage the situation. The entrance of the Panama Canal is now filled with ships left with no choice but to wait their turn, which could take up to 18 days or take the long, hazardous route around Cape Horn. With the new restrictions, ships are forced to book passage slots months in advance or pay extra to skip the queue. Yep. A Japanese ship paid a staggering $3.98 million to get their vessel expedited, and this is apart from the normal passage fee. With this situation, experts around the world have expressed their concerns, warning that increased transportation costs can disrupt supply chain and affect the price of goods. So what happens now? Well, as the water crisis at the canal intensifies, Mexico, seeking a golden opportunity for commerce, has initiated plans to revive its century-old railway line that connects the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. 
despite the Mexican president stating that they do not intend to compete with their Panamanian brothers who are going through a tough water crisis, the Mexican government has injected over $4.5 billion in the revitalization project called Corridor Interoceanico del Istmo de Tehuantepec, better known as the Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. It's a 300-kilometer railway project in southern Mexico that aims to revive the old rail tracks of Tehuantepec, build new ones, and construct roadways, airports, and industrial parks at strategic locations, a bold step that aims to reactivate southern Mexico's economy and create a more efficient alternative for the ailing canal. But how is the corridor centuries older than the Panama Canal, yet not as popular? The history of the corridor dates back to the 1800s, when President Porfirio Diaz saw an opportunity to connect Oaxaca with the southern coast of Mexico to Veracruz. He envisioned a railway that linked the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. After years of planning and construction, the railway was completed along with Port Coatzacoalcos, which opened up the Atlantic Ocean, to Port Salina Cruz, which opened up the Pacific Ocean. The railway was officially inaugurated by President Diaz in 1907 and recorded immense success for the first six years, transporting over 850,000 tons of cargo across the two oceans. This development came with considerable economic growth enjoyed by areas around the railway construction and small villages transitioned to larger ones with active economic populations. Sadly, the railway's popularity began to dwindle when a civil war exploded, throwing the country into chaos. The war was a defining event in the history of modern Mexico, with rebellions breaking out in different parts and foreign powers further complicating the power tussle. It was during this chaos that the Panama Canal was completed and officially launched for operation, offering a faster, cheaper, and safer alternative for cargo ships that were already skeptical about the safety of their merchandise. The opening of the Panama Canal dealt a devastating blow on southern Mexico's main source of income, as cargo transportation on the railway dropped by approximately 33% that year and in the following year dropped even further by 77%. With a decline in traffic and no money coming in, the railway slowly became a shadow of its former self and was eventually abandoned for years until President Andreas Manuel Lopez saw its close proximity to the Panama Canal as a potential for commerce and a golden opportunity to improve southern Mexico's struggling economy. In 2020, the president announced a proposal aimed at reviving the land-based route and enhancing seamless transitioning from ship to rail and back to ship. Here's how this works. From the seas, the ships will arrive at either the Salina Cruz port, which opens to the Pacific, or the Coatzalacolcos port, which opens to the Atlantic. Their cargoes will be then offloaded and transported on a network of 303-kilometer long rails, a route that takes just over six hours to go from one port to the other. Upon arrival, the containers will be then loaded onto an awaiting ship. You see, with cargo ships, every second counts, and the thought of offloading and reloading containers is a major time-consuming hassle. And while this might work efficiently with smaller vessels, can the ports handle the logistical complexities of loading and reloading big coastal ships? Well, the CIIT project aims to manage these potential hiccups by embarking on a number of revitalizing works, including rehabilitation of bridges and drainage works in Line Z, Line FA, and Line K, with Line Z being the most important since it's the only one that connects the two ports of Salina Cruz and Costa La Colcos. This would result in a speed increase of cargo trains from 20 km per hour to 70 km per hour for cargo trains and up to 80 km per hour for passenger trains. The project also involves modernizing and expanding the two ports, with a long breakwater and wide mouth port being built to receive larger vessels in Salina Cruz and a new highway access being constructed in Costa La Colcos. The ports will also be equipped with cutting-edge technology that ensures seamless offloading and reloading in order to enhance transit efficiency and avoid prolonged wait times. As part of the project, 10 industrial parks, three airports, highways, and more will be strategically positioned along the corridor's route to drive investments into the area. This is in order to facilitate job creation and increase the chances of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec becoming a global trading hub. 
Upon completion, the CIIT is projected to carry up to 300,000 cargo containers annually, and by 2033, it will have moved approximately 1.4 million containers. Can the Isthmus of Tehuantepec really become an alternative to the Panama Canal? Although the Panama Canal is going through a major drought crisis, it remains a global maritime shipping route that operates around the clock, and the thought of the Mexican rail line running it out of business is almost impossible. For some perspective, the Isthmus of Tehuantepec is projected to move over 300,000 cargo containers annually between the two ports. While this is an impressive record, it is still barely scratching the surface of Panama's capacity to move an average of 4 million containers annually. Despite strong conviction that the Mexican rail poses no threat to the waterway, since it can only handle a fraction of what Panama Canal does, it can function as a handy backup that complements the canal taking loads off its back to prevent shipping traffic and avoid prolonged delays. If you enjoyed our video, join our membership, Paper Pilot Club, to support us. You'll get monthly custom paper airplane designs, early access to our videos, and exclusive member badges to stand out in the comments. Click join now and be a part of the adventure today.